Okay, we are trying this again. Hopefully you guys can hear me better now. I don't know if the audio has fixed itself. Hopefully this works a lot better. I had to restart some things and made sure some other things were connected. Are you guys picking me up okay? Yes, no, maybe so. Hopefully. Let me see, let me. This might be ugly for a second, but let me see. <laughs> Testing. All right, so I, all right, I seem to be coming through okay. For now, there we go. I heard myself on YouTube. All right, so hopefully you guys are hearing me everywhere. Um, man, gotta love technology, right? Uh, yeah, so I'm still getting the thumbs up so we're going to start all over again hello i am dr solo period the most famous artist you've never heard of and welcome to kapow the comic art academy i'm so excited happy if you didn't hear me before i'm going to say it again just to give my veterans their proper um their proper honor happy belated memorial day as a disabled uh veteran who served our country who's had that distinct honor and privilege um i my fellow vets my brothers at arms brothers and sisters at arms have a very special place in my heart um and uh, I know it's it's Tuesday, but yesterday uh, we celebrated. It wasn't about barbecue and cookouts and all the great stuff, as fun as that is. It really is about commemorating those who uh, sacrificed their lives to, so that we could have the freedoms that we, we, we currently enjoy. And even though we're sheltered in, in place, we still have freedom that is, is ensured by our brothers and sisters serving in the armed forces. So thank you so much. Uh, happy belated Memorial Day. And today, if you can see here on the drawing table, we are drawing King Triton. Now, if you were here last uh, last Tuesday, if you were here last Tuesday, man oh man, Ariel gave me the flux, right? Actually, the one that we did live, which is this blue one, is to me a lot better than the one that I did uh, by myself the morning, the pre-draw lot better still not quite on par but remember i felt that disney kind of punked me right because <laughs> i'm not i'm not nearly as versed with uh drawing disney uh themed characters as i, as I am with many others and so um yeah disney kind of punked me on that one you guys and so i have made it my mission uh and anybody that's in the creative arts knows that we love challenges and if you're a, a new and aspiring artist you have to be willing to embrace the things that you may not be as accomplished in. You know, it doesn't mean that you don't have any skill. I'd never say that, okay? My, my fragile ego would not allow me to do that. But there are some things that I need to get sharper on, and that's what this is about. You know, whenever we pick up our pencil or our stylus or our paintbrush, whatever, you, or your crayon, whatever you, wanna, you guys want to draw with, it really is a mission to get better, okay? A, a lot of times we, we get... We can get complacent in others that may not be as accomplished as you, uh, you know, kind of telling you how good you are. It doesn't mean that you're not good, right? But we have to watch out for that trap of being very complacent and thinking that we're good enough. Because one thing about the arts, as with anything in life, there is always room for improvement, always. And so Ariel messed me up, you guys. Ariel messed me up, okay? <laughs> I was like rattled, I was frazzled, and I said I made a comment in the a previous live stream that whenever you're drawing anything that's Disney related, it's kind of like um, you have to be on your A game. It's kind of like you know you just can't get up and just sing Whitney Houston, right? Right? You just can't sit up and just just jump up behind a mic and 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 do Michael Jordan or pick up a ball, uh, Michael Jackson, and pick up a basketball, and do Michael Jordan, right? If you're going to take on anything that was done in excellence and and that was considered exceptional you have to bring your a game <laughs> and i didn't bring my a game for ariel so i've decided that i'm going to take a, a a block of time and i'm going to master disney disney style drawing and it's not that i don't have my own style you guys know that i'm a i'm i've been a professional animator and artist for quite some time and i'm used to drawing on model right but i couldn't quite get that model but i think i kind of I think I did pretty okay with King Triton, right? He's my de second Disney attempt. Ariel was kind of like an experiment that I kind of had to cut my teeth on, 
And by the time I got to her, her dad, King Triton, this this brother right here, and we're doing the whole mermaid thing because it's mermaid, right? If you're a professional artist or you're, you're active on social media and artistic circles, May has been designated mermaid. Don't ask me who comes up with this. Don't ask me who coined the hashtag. I couldn't tell you, okay? But mermaid is where you, you spend every day of the month in any type of prompt month. They're called prompt months. And where you spend every day in the month and you – you draw something related to uh, the theme of that month. And this is Mermaid. And if you're like me, uh, kind of busy and got a lot of things going on, a lot of artists complain about not being able to keep up with prompt months. And that's okay because I have an app for that. And the description of the app is actually in the bio, all right? And it, it, it almost does away with the need for a prompt month because I know that those of us that are on the go, we want to be pushed, we want to be inspired. And so I created an app so that you can pull it out of your pocket and right then and there, you guys, you can draw something that you've never drawn before in a style that you've never attempted before. It's all in the app. So check it out. Uh, but right now we're going to check out and attack King Triton of the Mer people, the Merman King Triton himself. And so thank you guys so much for joining. If you see, I am flying my namesake today. I am flying solo. Kapow kids couldn't join me today. A lot of our children are playing, you know, are, are, are playing catch up or trying to stay on target with their e-learning. I know that I've been watching it on the news. Mom and dad, my heart goes out to you. I know how uh, our teachers are probably now more appreciated now more than ever. I think they should have always been, they've always been grossly paid, underpaid. I think that uh, Charles Barkley said it best, you know, police, fire, and teachers uh, need to be up there with doctors and lawyers when it comes to pay because they really provide a service that kind of transcends um, what we may be aware of. And I just wanted to give a shout out. I know that you guys are doing your best. And if you can't join me, fine. We're going to continue this because I made a pledge during the uh, shelter in place to come before you guys as often as possible. Now it's every Tuesday and Thursday, 2 to 3 p.m. And I'm going to do my best to help supplement your learning with some creative with a creative spin. And so we're attacking King Triton today. Enough jabbing. Let's do King Triton. All right. So you heard that deep breath? That deep breath is anxiety, people. <laughs> that deep breath is actually anxiety. And I'll be honest with you. Um, man, Disney... Disney puts a lot, invests a lot into their artists. Let me start off with the blue here because it's a little dark blue because it's kind of, it's a lot more visible, all right? They put a, invest a lot into their artists and it shows because their characters are so emotive and expressive and we have to make sure that whenever we do a Disney type character, if you, if, I don't care if you're watching modern day Disney on Disney XD, right? If you're watching modern day Disney with Disney XD, you have to understand, understand that it's all about expression and, and, and characters emoting. And so, oh, before we get in, let's let's do our formal intro here at Kapow so you know where you're at. All right, all right, all right. Let's get started with King Triton. I'm, 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 I'm ready to dive in. I'm ready to. Dive. I took my deep breath. I got my woo saw. I'm centered, right? I'm centered, and let's do King Triton. So we're gonna start off as we always do. Well, not as we always do. This time we're gonna start off with a flow line, right? A line of flow, and this is something that we often use in in art to make sure that the character flows right in the composition, right? So it's, it's almost like an S, right? It even look like, you can look at it as a belly, right? It kind of looks like a belly right there, like a pot belly, but it's kind of like an S. And if you look at the flow here, if I take my red, I'm gonna take my red here, and this is one of the reasons why I do these, right? You have that same shape coming down the middle. See that? See that? That's the flow line. It's almost, it's where his spine would go, right? And so we're doing the same thing here, flow line. Right, and everything that we do is going to fall on that line. All right, we're going to build. We're going to build this character on that line, so that we make sure number one that he fits in, in on the page properly, and that he flows 
All right, because he's a mermaid, a merman, not a mermaid, a merman, and he's in water. He's got to flow with the water, right? He's got to look as if he's kind of floating, like if you've ever been in a pool or seen anybody just, you know, sitting there just chilling on water. There, there's a flow to it, and we have to make sure that we keep the character consistent with that. And so right here at the top, we're going to start with our, our, our typical circle. Remember, it's all about shape language here, right? We're going to start with our circle, which is going to be its head, his head right and we're going to go down here and we're going to start right here and we're going to give him some shoulders right we're going to give him some shoulders right there that's where his shoulders are going to fall right approximately right there we have the head we're starting with with just the head because what we have to remember is that king triton has this nice big beard so a lot of the features that we would normally see we are hidden here so here's the head we're going back to red here's the head right right and here's the shoulder line right there, right? Now, if you want to go ahead and you want to kind of draw out his, where his chin and stuff would be, feel free to do so, right? But what I would prefer to do, because I'm not seeing that right now, and I'm pretty confident that my, 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 my flow line is good, right? My flow line is good down, you know, where he's, he's properly divided in the image. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to just going to, I'm just going to put down a little, a little where his beard because that's really what, what we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of beard right here right now I'm not gonna put too much detail I'm just gonna kind of mark it there but what there's his shoulders right there right and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna just kind of right here where it starts to bend right here let's go back to the original drawing right let's hold them side by side so we can see right here see boom because I know that his chest let's go ahead and fill out his chest Right, if we were to go ahead and fill out his chest, we got a big over here, right? Or some people like to use, I, I like to use when I'm doing chest, I kind of like to use trapezoids, right? I kind of like to use you know, like a, a box. I like round because a lot of times when we use round shapes as opposed to straight ones, is we, we get a consistent flow. We, we're, we're, our mind is kind of already dialed into curves as opposed to angles, right? And for a lot of beginning artists, that can be a little tricky, kind of shifting mentally between curves and angles, right? But for his chest, if we look at it right here, right, where his shoulders meet, there's that, that trapezoid right there. It's called a trapezoid, right? And we, can, we can go ahead and put a skeleton here, his arm, right, and his hands right there. Elbow, we we'll put circles where things, where our joints would be, right? Elbows. And this is something you haven't probably seen me do, um, and it's because partially because uh, I want you to focus more on the shapes. Because if you build the shapes properly, the the skeleton can take care of itself. Now, a lot of artists we use the skeleton stick the stick figure method with the skeleton because all this is a stick figure. Like you see the head right here, head boom, shoulders. It's like a big stick figure, okay? And we oftentimes we use this to kind of plot out and map out our character's skeleton, right? That's exactly what it is, is a skeleton. Um, but with this one, he doesn't have a human skeleton, right? And so it can be a little deceiving, but if we still focus on the shapes, like I still have a circle here, right? I still have a circle here, right? And I just have to connect these in a smooth way, okay? So however you want to look at it, right? have a circle here right I'm putting a circle kind of right here right if we go down here it kind of fans out if we go here this is the end of his tail go ahead and darken this it kind of fans out just like that right so however you want to look at it we're going to add the shoulder here circle there a circle there right see how I'm connecting see how, how the skeleton is kind of forming itself I go down boom elbow see and his hand, boom, circle. Just like we did here. I want you guys to kind of see this. Even though I don't do it a lot, I like to focus on the shapes more so than the skeleton. But don't get it twisted. When things get very complex, it's always a good idea to go all the way down to the basics. Break down your image, people. Break it down. And so the simplest form that we're, we're, ever, we're ever taught, even as children, are stick figures right and we and we still use these 
So if I'm going to go to stick figure method, boom, there we go, right? It's just a fancy stick figure. Just a fancy stick figure. Is that Poseidon? No, that's not Poseidon. This is actually uh, King Triton from the Little, Little, Little Mermaid. He was actually patterned after uh, Greek myth, um, but I'm on a Disney kick right now. I'm on a Disney kick because I got beat up by the Little Mermaid last Tuesday. And so I have made it my mission to um, get through Mermaid at least with some Disney stuff. And I'm going to revisit some Disney stuff down the road because I am not confident in my ability to accurately represent Disney styled characters. Okay. There's some artists out there like Loish and Vixie Arts. These are people I follow on, on social media. Check them out. They're amazing. They are amazing at their interpretation, very Disney inspired, or even some comic book artists that are inspired by Disney, like J. Scott Campbell. He's kind of like a superhero version of a Disney artist. You know, when I read it, when I purchased his book, his inspiration was Disney. When he said it, I saw it. I didn't see it prior to that, right? But he was one, he's one of the, the comic book industry's modern, modern masters. But this is actually King Triton from The Little Mermaid. Check it out while, you know, if you guys are still at home and um, doing the shelter in place, I'm going to start fleshing this out. See how I'm starting at the start. See how the importance of the shapes, see where the circle is, how I'm coming from there. And I'm keeping my center line the center, but I'm following the flow, right? Boom, 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 just like that. And because I have these shapes here, I can go ahead and I can start plotting in things like, you know, he has a little bit more angle than the original drawing, but that's okay. And remember, if you come off model, right, if you're not quite, you know, where you want to be, that's okay. That's okay. The thing about this, like I often say here at Kapow is communication, right? When we're drawing, we are attempting to communicate our, our idea. Our drawing is, our, is, is just a manifestation of what's in our head, right? We're trying to communicate what's in our head to someone who's looking at it. And if they can tell what it is with some level of certainty and reasonability, you have it, it, you've completed the most basic of tasks and effectively have communicated what you're drawing. And that's what we're looking for here, all right? So now I'm gonna start plotting in King Triton's features. And so just like this, because this is his head, he has a relatively small head. And the thing about King Triton is that he's muscular. He's muscular, off topic, but King Triton versus Aquaman, who would win? <laughs> King Tri uh, Triton versus Aquaman, who would win? That's, you know, it's funny. I would have to say, I would have to say Aquaman. Only because, number one, King Triton is a, is a king, right? Um, many kings were, were and, and I'm, Aquaman's a superhero. He's a warrior, right? And so, in a fight, now they both have magic tridents. We're, go we're going geek now and i wouldn't be doing this normally if the kapow kids were here <laughs> but since i'm by myself i can go off topic a bit because i'm probably gonna end up finishing this a little bit faster all right um but since we're going geek speak or as my wife would call it a geek spree since we're geek spring right now i would have to go with aquaman actually i just watched throne of atlantis and uh that's the wb animation and uh Really, really good animation with the New 52 Justice League. And Aquaman, with all of his abilities, King Triton's trident, obviously, is magical. Let's go ahead and put the trident here while we're talking about it. Try to make it fit on the paper adequately. Start with just a line, right? And we're just going to do some, some really basic stuff right here. Just to kind of, so we don't forget that it's there, right? But... Um, Aquaman with his abilities, man, and his strength, he's up there in strength. DC did a great run when they re when they reinterpreted Aquaman in New 52, and they really they really kind of uh, quantified his power. Like he's basically Superman underwater, man. Right? He's like Superman underwater. His strength is on par with Superman and like the Martian Manhunter. And I just don't think as muscular and as buff as Triton is. I don't think he wants some kind of those kind of problems, and so, <laughs> so now I'm going to plot in his chest, right? I'm kind of plotting in his chest here. He's got a nice muscular chest. Now most of this is going to be hit, hidden by this beard, right? We got this beard, nice flowing beard here. 
and I kind of have I kind of drew King Triton kind of looking back right and so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of plotting in where his eyes would go right plus he doesn't have legs <laughs> I love it <laughs> yeah plus he doesn't have legs and so kind of plotting in his eyes and his nose and really that's almost all we see that's almost all we see because he's got he's got hair everywhere he's got hair everywhere and remember when we did hair last week hair we do in mass hair we don't do we don't do strands we elude that there are strands we give the illusion of strands but we do mass just like we do a shape right remember everything in art is shapes we don't focus on lines lines are a means to an end to communicate a shape right but if we focus on the shape the lines have a tendency to work themselves out all right and so here's his his uh I won't give you technical terms because this is not age appropriate to go that deep. But now I'm gonna start blocking him in, right? He's got a nice, he's got a nice big musculature. See right here. I'm doing this for you guys so you guys can see the basic shapes that underneath, right? And see, how I'm doing this. I'm just, I'm moving faster than I normally would if some of the kids were here because I like to check up on their progress, but I can just kind of talk and just kind of flow through this. And so now on top of the shape, I'm just rounding things off and adding curves because his, his form is based off of a real person, off of a real person. So like if I added a cone here, that would be his forearm, right? Catch at the elbow, right? I could add a cone here. These are cones, cylinders, right? Boom, right? And that's the basic shape. But I want, he's got muscles under there. So now I'm going to kind of round these off so that they make sense. Right? Okay. I remember uh, when The Little Mermaid came out, it was in 1989. I was, wow. I was, um, 89, I was 17. I was 17. And even then, this was, it was like the onset of, we can go ahead and add his, his chin right here. So you can see with his, his chin underneath there, and that's where his, his uh, neck would be if, he, if we could see it, right? And right here, we're going to go ahead and start adding his waistline, his little waist. He has a waist fin. I know I'm making it look easy, and I know it seems like I'm breezing through this, but keep in mind, I drew it once already, um, which is this drawing you see right here. And remember, this drawing is available at my on my website at kapowschool.com forward slash kidzone. You can color along. You can trace it, right? I'm a big fan of tracing. You're going to hear me say that all the time. Tracing is how I taught myself how to draw. By tracing and going and repeating lines that are already there i kind of learned how the shapes work right it, it, it was this connection between my brain and, and your hand that happens that is quite amazing right it saves you the trouble of trying to guess right and i'm a fan if you're just learning how to draw right find some things that you like or things that you're interested in i don't care if it's a car whatever and trace it and then go back and draw it don't stop right there go back and draw it and a big thing in the art community, if you trace it, give credit to the person who drew it, <laughs> all right? Don't say, ooh, I drew this and you didn't. That is like a major faux pas, all right? I know this is for a, a younger demographic. Most older creatives know this. But if you didn't draw it, don't take credit for it, all right? Don't do that. And so I'm going to go ahead and put his nose in. I'm going to kind of lighten things up in here because it's getting a little busy in there, right? Because I didn't do all these lines in the original drawing, right? I did these. I, I, I do more lines here and more shape language here because I really want you guys to kind of get what's happening underneath, right? Um, but personally, I don't do a lot of these. I kind of know where the shapes are because I've been doing it for so long, all right? When, you, when you've done anything for a long time and you love it, um, if you're not good at it, there's a problem. If you don't find ways to kind of shorten the process, um, you might want to reconsider what you're doing. But I've done this for a very, very long time. And because of that, it allows me to 
uh, they seem like shortcuts, but it's almost, it's, it's not shortcuts, it's actually it's programming, right? What you're seeing is my programming trying to kick in. And if I'm moving too fast, go ahead and pop into the DM and say, Solo, please slow down, all right? I, I, I do not mind doing that for you. I will slow down for you, okay? Now, I did something fancy with this hand here. I kind of had it open, right? I used, I went online and I found an image of Triton. This is actually uh, an image of Triton with some license to it. I kind of changed a few things to kind of fit what I wanted, right? And so I kind of opened this hand here and we have something that we learned a while ago called force shortening. Now see with this hand, I want you to see the shape here because hands, hands trip up every artist, okay? Many artists, I won't say every artist. Some are more accomplished and versed than others. I, I am fortunate that hands are actually something I'm known for um, but hands are difficult because they can do anything because they're so multi-jointed and, and so, and so, um, changeable getting, you know, most superhero guys would either do a clinch fist, right? Or a karate chop hand, right? Fist or karate chop hand. But our, if we look at our hands throughout the day, they can do so many things. It's funny. I kind of keep my, my, uh, six month old granddaughter entertained. And I put my hands in front of her face and I just start wiggling my fingers and she's fascinated just by the movement, right? And so whenever you're drawing something, the hands actually do communicate. Just like I said, your eyebrows communicate, your hands communicate. We actually gesture a lot with our hands when we talk. My three-year-old granddaughter's upstairs. Everything she says is, is, is supported by a hand gesture, right? At three. And it's, it's a subconscious thing. But when we're drawing, we have to keep that in mind. Right. And because I have King Triton kind of relaxed and looking, saying, hey, hey there. Right. I wanted to show some relaxation that he's not prepping for a fight. Right. Fists communicate fight or aggression. And so I had to kind of open this hand kind of, and an open hand kind of communicates chilling. Right. Relaxation. Right. No threat. Right. When we shake hands, we, we go and shake hands before the COVID-19. <laughs> we were actually shaking hands. All right. Hopefully we'll get back to shaking hands soon. Uh, but before COVID-19, when we shake hands, an open palm is actually a symbol that you don't have any weapons. It's not a threat. OK. And so open palm spread fingers is kind of like innocence. Right. It shows that you can trust me. And so I wanted to have a kind of relaxed state with his hands. So I had his, this one hand here because this one's in a fist holding his, his ever ready trident. See, I'm just putting the circles here. See how I just communicated that? That's programming. You guys will get there, right? I use a circle, an oval, an O and an oval, and we got a fist. And if I wanted to go ahead and get fancy, I go ahead and start adding fingers. And there we are. King, King Triton's fist. Boom. Done. Right? I will teach you all of this. You will learn step by step in my comprehensive course. Go check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash kapow school. And if you sign up now, um, you will be automatically a founder of Kapow School, the comprehensive course, which is which is going to be um, a ridiculously low entry price that you it will never be increased on you guys. OK, because I'm launching it now at the request of many parents um, because they enjoy. Obviously, I guess they enjoy what they've been seeing, which I'm so grateful for. And so now Disney trick with Disney is the eyes. All right. These big, expressive eyes all right and so we're doing a c like a little curve here it's a bunch of curves right it's almost like little balls which our our, our eyes really are but they're surrounded by curved lines right they kind of like are nested disney does very good with nesting their their eyes and then the nose kind of comes here if we if this was his face and we cut it in half eyes right Cut it in half again, nose, cut it in half again, mouth, right? And so we don't really see, we only see the bottom of his mouth. So we, here we have his nose. I'm just going to give him a nice little hook nose. Boom. Then everything is beard. Everything is beard. He's got like this really cool biker beard <laughs> and mustache. And see how I'm just kind of making it flow? Make it flow any way you want. He's in water, man. So go ahead and make it flow. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? Welcome. And so um, make it flow. 
right, is not hanging down because he's in the water. The reason his mustache is not hanging down is because we want, we want whoever sees this, sees this, he's a fish in water. And so I kind of made the, the mustache kind of, kind of go with that. And so we have these nice little flowing lines, right? It kind of shows he's in water, right? And they're nice and expressive, and his nose actually kind of overlaps and sits in there, right? And all you see from the bottom is this little bottom lip. That's it. That's it. And everything else is beard. Now, I have his eyes kind of looking back at us. I'm very, I'm very keen on making sure that um, our characters are in some way because we're doing this and I know that you guys are are new to it but if you notice I try to place the eyes and and everything so that he's almost like he's addressing you right he's addressing you. he's not looking off into some weird space all right so keep that in mind when you're drawing and you're laying your stuff out what is your character doing who's he interacting with in this case of what we're doing here at Kapow School our characters are interacting with you the artist you know, and the person looking at. So I wanted Triton kind of looking back at me, right? And so he's got these nice flowing, these little S-curved eyebrows, right? They kind of flow. Boom. And you notice how I'm rounding off the edges here? It's because we want to communicate, we don't want to communicate aggression. Remember when I said Disney's very good with curved edges, and even like if you look at characters such as in The Lion King, uh, if you look at um, Aladdin or The Lion King or or any any bad guy in the Disney uh, library, usually angular shapes denote evil, right? And that's almost in every every um, it's almost like a a sacred cow in the creative circles. Now, granted, you can break it if you want, because I love characters that are that are deceptively, they look kind, right? But they usually have uh, some type of evil shape, and usually angles are considered, you know, not trustworthy, right? Triangles, right? Um, squares usually symbolize strength. Right, square shapes in our characters, right? And usually, if you ever want to find out if a character is good or evil and you're not quite sure, look at the shapes inside the characters, either their design, or in their, you know, in their costume or in their design, in their face, in their features. And usually, you'll find some shape because the artist kind of wants you to know, the designers kind of want you to know that this person may not be on the level, right? Thank you so much for the smiley face, Sister Sister Shay. I, I miss my guy Elijah today. And I'm going to start handing him his, his crown. He has this, um, this, it looks like coral, right? And it was a great design choice. They, they didn't overcomplicate King Triton. He's not a major character. He's not a major character in this. He is a major character, but he's not the focal point. The focal point, obviously, is Ariel, his daughter. And so it has five points on his crown, right? <laughs> it has five points on this crown. Thank you so much. It has five points on this crown. And I would encourage you guys, if you want to check out Little Mermaid, it's a great, great movie. Um, you know, Disney adapts fairy tales and, and classic stories. Um, little sidebar, they actually told some mistruths about The Lion King. <laughs> that it was Disney's first original um production and it wasn't it's based off of uh, uh almost scene for scene uh, a japanese lion uh white lion called i believe it's bimba right and you can actually find it here on youtube right and anybody that's into manga or anime um disney claimed the lion king as his first ori original full-length feature because it, it historically always did fairy tales and like you know brother you know brothers Grimm and hans christian anderson and lion king was touted as this huge original disney feature that's what it wasn't it wasn't didn't mean one good but 
It wasn't. The original predated it by quite a few years. When somebody has a, a thing here on YouTube where they actually do a scene for scene comparison, and it is like appalling. I'm like, Disney, how could you? <laughs> See, at Kapow, we learn everything. I like, I like, I like the history of stuff, right? Thank you so much. I like the history of something. You got to know. I, I believe when you when you really invest in the story of a thing, it really spurs the artwork, right? And I'm very big in the story of things. You know, story is, you know, story is my, that's my jam. Give me a good story, right? Give me a good story and I will draw for hours. Characters just kind of supplement the story, right? They're, 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 they're the actors in the story. They're the vehicles of the story. But it really is the story that's underneath that really should push your art and your design choices. You know, what's really going on in this world that you're, that you're trying to get me to buy into? Um, I was just recently asked uh, for, by some very creative people to help them with their story development for a card game. And I was so honored. And they reached out to me because they love my storytelling emphasis on everything that I do here in my personal studio, Honor Studio. And so I, I, I just believe storytelling is is the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce, not the drawing, it's the storytelling, right? Because you can tell a great story with just stick figures. You don't have to be a great, a great, exceptional, accomplished artist to tell a good story. But if you are a good artist and you can tell a good story, man, you are batting a thousand. People will be breaking down the door to work with you. There are a lot of good artists, but the, the secret is becoming a good storyteller. In business, um, I've been doing a lot of stuff in business lately, and it really is the power of the story that people buy into businesses. You know, when we hear how someone overcame incredible odds and overcame, you know, uh, poverty or you know something like that, and they built this business, we're more inclined to support it because it's a story that we can get behind. So, and when you're creating your art, create a story. Even if it's somebody else's character, you can create your own stories to help move the art. Okay, you really can. It's not. It's not about um, who owns the characters, but who's telling the best story. See, now I'm just adding his fingers here, and see, I'm kind of, I'm kind of moving his fingers around because that's what our fingers would do. They don't. They kind of. Each one almost has a mind of its own. Right. And I'm keeping with the flow of everything. I want to make sure everything is nice and loose and relaxed and flowy, okay? Now I'm erasing all this underdrawing of the skeleton. So this is one of the reasons why I stopped doing this years ago when I actually was started, you know, when I developed my eye and I was able to really dial into the shapes underneath quicker is because all this erasing. As you get older, um, and more accomplished in the craft of art, you start finding ways, and we call it saving strokes, right? You start saving strokes because when you at a table drawing for 8, 10, 12, 16 hours, and I'm not exaggerating, ask any professional artist, should you be inclined to meet one or have a conversation with one? That's a normal work day. And it goes by fast because we love what we're doing, right? It goes by fast. But when you're doing that, you start finding ways to save strokes because your hand has muscles in it, right? And if you like run, run for miles every day, eventually your legs get tired. Your hand is no different. Your hand is no different. You develop good muscles, granted, right? We have good muscles in our hands. Many artists and people that work with their hands on a daily basis, um, very, very strong, developed muscles see I'm, these are just s shapes that's how i see them you know when i'm drawing i'm not so worried about the trident listen see, even when i'm drawing the trident i'm not worried about the trident i'm worried about the shapes that make up the trident like i'm thinking in my head i'm thinking u now here i'm thinking s right i'm thinking alphabet shapes right s s right here i'm thinking c i'm thinking s and u this is a u right 
and up the middle, right? I'm thinking arrows. Arrow and arrow is actually a shape. I'm thinking arrow. Arrow into another arrow. Right? Sitting on a stick. When I tell you people, this is actually what's going through my head when I'm drawing. I'm not saying this for your benefit. Okay, I'm trying to simplify what I'm seeing so that my brain can, can take the information and put it to, to use quickly. Okay, put it to use quickly. And here we just have, we've got a little two-pack. You know, they made, they, even though they gave him gray hair, they made King Triton buff. He wasn't your typical old gray-haired dude. Not by a long shot. And here, just like we did with, with Ariel, I was thinking tree leaves. Tree leaves, right? Tree leaves. Boom, four spins. Tree leaves. Nice, flowing tree leaves. One over the other. Making sure that the, the lines flowed smoothly. That's it. See where we're at with time. We're at 250. For those of you who came in late, thank you. I'm DR Solo Perry, the most famous artist you've probably never heard of. And check me out on my social media at Kapow School. Um, I'm not using any fancy materials here. This is a simply a colored pencil. This is it. The reason we use a lot of colored pencils, um, some people are like, why do you use a colored pencil? Well, number one, uh, they're made of wax as opposed to graphite, which means the, it doesn't move around the paper as much. Like whenever you're doing with a pencil lead, you may have what's called migration. Okay? I'll sharpen that so I can, because I may not have time to go over this with ink. Disney characters are fairly complex. They're fairly complex, but once you break every down, everything down to its basic shapes, like he's got, got a hook nose, right? Once you break things down to its basic shapes, it becomes a lot easier to attack it. And I never want anybody, I don't want any young artist to ever feel intimidated by uh, drawing something that looks a little, quote unquote, out of your league per se. Because it's not. That's, that's, that's a myth. It's not out of your league, okay? It may be beyond your current skill level, but that doesn't mean we don't do it, all right? As you saw, if you watched... We're drawing his chest right here. As you said, saw when we, when, if I, when I drew uh, the Little Mermaid, she was complex, and because I had not focused on the skills required to draw her, she kind of threw me for a loop. But now, if you can see with King Triton, he feels and looks like a Disney character, right? Because I actually went back once I got finished streaming with you guys. I went back and I really just started studying the characters online, right? Like I said, Disney puts a lot of money and effort into their artists so that they all are kind of on the same page with how to look and interpret, interpret the characters, right? You don't see a lot of deviation in the Disney style. It has its own style. It's its own sub art form, if you will, okay? And they've done that because... Um, they want you to know it's theirs, right? They want you to know it's coming from their house, that it's their baby. And that's the sign of greatness. And so that everybody that comes on has to be able to meet that level of quality, right? Um, in the characters, in the characters and, and how they're drawn. It's a quality standard. And now I'm gonna draw the outside of his head. Give him his little his brow, his little cheek right there. See, I put it right there where his eye is. It's got that little bend has got to really, really complement the eye where his cheek. It, it kind of sits in his cheek. And we draw the little outside lines to kind of show how it's nested in his head. I'll erase some of these lines. And I usually try to stay in, in, it as, in an hour because I'm, I'm trying to be respectful of mom and dad's time and the e-learning. But since it's just me here today, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start outlining this guy.
those of you who are just joining me, thank you so much. And we're going to go see if we can go ahead and, and at least finish the outline like we normally do here at the, the Kapow School of Good Zen. And this is just a Sharpie. On printing paper, mom and dad. This is just printing paper. I like a nice, thick, heavy outline. Again, you can find this on my site. This drawing is already uploaded. The King Triton Color Buddy. And I'm just going to do all the outline. And I'm going to go with a thinner line on the inside. And I do this so that it reads really distinctly in the, in the camera. Once I upgrade my camera, <laughs> I probably won't be using anything quite so thick. I'm just outline, tracing the outline. I'm not going inside of him at all. I'm going to use a much thinner marker for that. And this is just kind of make it kind of bold and kind of pop for you guys that are watching. I have a thinner Sharpie, but it's a Sharpie nonetheless. And the reason I'm not using my quote unquote high end professional utensils is because I want you guys to remember that it's not about the tool, it's about the hand that holds it. You know, if you guys really want to irritate your favorite artist when you're following them online, um, ask them what pencil is that? What pen is that? That is always the sign of someone that is looking at the wrong thing, right? The wrong thing. We use certain tools, uh, granted, to accomplish certain effects, but for the most part, many of us use the same things you guys use every day. And I do this because I want mom and dad to be confident that, hey, this is just a Sharpie. This is, this is just a, a pencil. You know, Soul's not using anything that is going to break the bank. Nothing that's going to break the bank. And trust me when I say Soul ain't got a bank to break right now. I'm as money conscious as everyone that's, we're all in, like the, like the slogan says, I thought that I'd, I was being creative when I said it on my first live stream, but now it's, I see it's what me, it was just like the, the environment, so I'd probably heard it someplace under else and didn't recognize it, but we're all in this together. And so we are all in this together. I know money is at a premium with a lot of us as um, we try to jumpstart our economy again. And mom, some certain parents, mom and dad, may not be making as much money as they once did, you know, when things were normal. A restaurant and hospitality workers, you know, uh, it's been tight for everybody. So these are cheap, 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 cheap Sharpies. Cheap, 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 cheap Sharpies. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my granddaughter upstairs. My three-year-old granddaughter. She is a bundle of energy. And I ain't going to use a ruler for this. I'm going to freehand this. These outlines. Again, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to use a smaller Sharpie for the details. Now, if you guys watch to catch me later when I'm live streaming some of my um, production and commission stuff, you will probably never see me use a Sharpie. <laughs> and guess what? I'm not easily irritated. So if you do want to ask me solo, what pen is that? What pencil is that? I will answer you without any exasperation or irritation. But there are some artists out there, I'm telling you, it's hilarious. And it's funny when I, when I'm, because I still watch other artists, I, I'm still learning. Don't think that I'm in my, you know, I'm sitting on some type of cloud in some kind of mountain, like some kind of guru that has mastered this craft. I watch, if man, I follow artists on Instagram and YouTube and when I have, and I have my alerts on, and when they go live, I'm trying to see if there's something I can learn that'll take my art to the next level. Still learning from other artists. That's a lifetime thing. 
And guess what? I've asked them, what is that you're using? But I've kind of learned how to phrase it in a way <laughs> that kind of alludes that I'm a professional too, so they kind of feel more inclined to answer. You know, a lot of them, they won't answer. Some guys will just downright snap on you. Some of them just won't answer. But it's kind of like when you learn a secret language, you, you know, when a professional asks a certain way, you kind of, oh, he knows, a prof he's, a, he's a pro, he knows what this is, so let, I might want to answer that guy. King's writing. Just went ahead and get in here. Find his finger. All right. Back out of his trident. We're going to be finishing up this very quickly. Trying to go into the fingers, see that? Into the fingers. Get a separation, show his hand. He's got these gauntlets on his wrists. They have jewels in them. I'm not gonna noodle this at all. I might do this, um, like I said, you'll get more extensive stuff during the comprehensive course, and then you'll see me noodling. If you want to see really how I approach this from start to finish, that will be in the comprehensive course. I post time lapses, uh, but they have no they have no commentary. Um, I'll be saving the commentary for those that actually um, go to the Patreon, kind of pre-register. And then you can kind of hear me talk my way through the process uh, in a way that's a little bit more thorough and cohesive um, and using my, the actual tools that I use to get something as sharp and as clean as this. See, even though this is not sharp and as clean as the original drawing, the one that you can download on my website, it still communicates the same message. And that goes to my, it doesn't have to be perfect. Not per Perfection in artistic pursuits is 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 an artist's trap it really really is because you'll never you can always you can work a piece to death you can overwork a piece and you have to know when you've communicated effectively enough to get the point across in an image you know when we look at our at the great masters like michelangelo and Picasso and those other guys, believe it or not, as, as masterful as they are, I guarantee you, if they were alive today, they will still be able to tell you some things that they wish they could have done differently in the Sistine Chapel. I guarantee it. We consider the masterpieces. The artists themselves never do so. They always can think about what they want to do differently. How could, they, how could I have done this better? How could I have communicated that better? You know, we would not dare criticize the great masters, but trust me, if they could speak today, they would criticize themselves. I promise you that. I promise you that. And I'm, see how I'm doing the beard as a mask. And see how my lines are all flowing, right? They're all kind of complementing one another and the environment that the environment is we're assuming he's underwater thank you so much thank you Omni thank you thank you so much I don't know where you I, I, I don't know where you're watching from I'm, I'm multi streaming to, to a few platforms um, usually it kind of gives me the logo of where it's coming from but thank you so much that blesses me So we gotta give him his man, his man nips. Cause that's actually in the cartoon. Mom and dad, don't start stop supporting me. That's actually in the cartoon. <laughs> okay. Watch the Little Mermaid if you don't believe me.
this is just a plain old sharpie. This is an old. This is a. This is the ultra fine point. Still not fine enough for my taste, but um, as I said here, I don't want you guys going out and I don't want to be putting something in the stream that um, is more costly unnecessarily so. A little for in Kapow in the comprehensive course, you know, I'm doing a Kapow Kids Zone course as well as a you know Kapow the Comic Art Academy, the main course. That's for 13 and up. But here at the Kids Zone, this is for a little ones, you know, 12 and down, 12 and under. Just trying to help them, you know, discover the joys of, of the arts and you know, creating just some fun stuff. So I'm not trying to get too deep here with a whole bunch of fancy pencils and markers. If I showed you guys my studio, if you follow me on social media, you probably see my studio. I got the stuff. One thing we do as artists that we're constantly doing, we're constantly experimenting with new new tools. And so, um, yeah, I'm not above buying something that I will never use again. Because <laughs> you just want to see if it works and if it adds, if it brings value to your process. And sometimes the answer is no. You know, I, I have some, some stuff here that I will never use that I bought just as because I saw someone else use it. And I'm like, oh, man, that looks cool. Let me, OK, let me see. Let me see if I, you know, if I like it or either I didn't like it or it just didn't add any value to what I was already doing that I saw as, as practical. And so I just abandoned it. And I don't want mom and dad wasting money on that right now. Wait till you, you you old enough and you get a job and then you start experimenting with your with your artistic pursuits and then you can kind of support your own creative habits, you know. But right now, kid zone during the quarantine and uh, the the kid zone course that the parents have requested because they want it want it to continue because I guess their kids are digging it. We're gonna keep it simple as possible simple as possible. The only thing I'm not using is crayons. Can't go back there. I'm a little too old and too little too, little too far gone <laughs> to be using crayons. Okay. But I'm so excited about my sketchy info series that I'm launching here on YouTube. Okay. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of a way to kind of reward people. I, I love giving away free stuff. So I don't know if you guys would be interested in some art or whatever. But I'm, I'm actually curious to see who kind of gets, you know, I'm doing some very, I'm doing stuff that I, that I loved as a kid. I'm just doing it and updating it for today's audience. So it's, it's not, you know, necessarily kid zone stuff. It's not inappropriate, but it's a little advanced comic book and animation, you know, fair. You know, uh, mom and dad may remember it. I don't expect anybody under the age of 20 to remember some of the stuff that I'm going, to, I'm going to be reinventing and giving clues as to who and what they are in sketchy info. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I'm going to tell you at the end of the video who the character is because I'm redesigning them. So they're going to look different. They're going to feel the same if you know who they are. They're just going to look different if that makes any sense. Look and feel are two different things. They're going to feel the same. They're going to feel familiar. They're just going to look very different than what you may be accustomed to. Let's see here. I'm just going ahead and uh, putting his finger. And this is foreshortening. We learned that, man, I think at the first week here in the kid zone, foreshortening. When objects are closer to you, kind of become bigger or kind of lose their shape in some way. You kind of lose a little bit of the information, but how to make it read well. Oh, let me get that jewel right there in the middle. Oh, let me get his, his fins. I'm kind of rushing through here because I'm over my time almost by 10 minutes. So you watch me cover my mistakes. See that? See how I covered that? <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not perfectly clean anyway. But my uh, my uh, my creative OCD kicks in every once in a while, so I have to have clean lines. You guys have heard me say that. It's kind of Solo's thing. 
I have to have at least a relatively clean line. Relatively clean, not perfect, but that's the lesson. It's funny because as I do this here in the kid zone, I'm reminding myself that it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and as we always do here in the kid zone, whenever we're done, we sign our work. We're still in 20, and here's my little nod to COVID right here on the drawing. A little nod to the COVID. Boom, boom, boom. The corona, my corona for the O. And there we go. There we go. There we go. So much fun. You know, I really... I really would like to add some music to the stream. I really would, but it's funny. Since I've been doing this, I have gotten a couple of copyright strikes, even though I'm using royalty-free royalty -free music, and it's a little bit annoying. I am going to find a way to put together a royalty-free soundtrack for when I'm drawing here, and it's just me and you guys are hanging out with me, so you guys can have something to listen to, where I also don't get a copyright strike. Okay, the copyright strike, I got copyright strikes from, when I did the Little Mermaid one Tuesday, I got copyright strikes from uh, the United Emirates, right? The, the island states. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Because of the tropical theme music, which was royalty free that I downloaded because it was tropical. And I'm like, you guys are actually striking me because you're saying you own this music. And it was like, I think YouTube wouldn't show the videos in 256 countries of the Emirates. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So of course I had to dispute it. I don't know what they have. It wasn't a strike, it was a claim, right? A claim. And so even though I'm not doing this for money, it's a little bit annoying, but I'm really going to be trying, I'm really gonna put forth some sincere energy to really up the value here uh, when I'm doing the live streams here live with some animations. You see, I got the little overlay with the little uh, King Triton to kind of so you can see what I'm drawing. Um, but I want you guys to hang out and enjoy your time here and just relax and, and, and create something fun. So here we go. King Triton, King Triton that we did live, King Triton that I did by myself. We learned a few things. Listen, check me out on all my social media, Ekapal School. You can see it right there at the bottom of your screen, Ekapal School. Right? You can go to my website, kapalschool.com. And uh, you can, if your child would like to join me live here in the virtual studio where I normally have some kids here, uh, we might end up veering from that all together, and I just might just come here live, you know, and just answer questions as we go. But I really want an, an interactive experience, but I understand the times may not work for everyone, especially around the country. Um, and so you guys let me know what you want, and I will do my best to deliver it to you as best I can. Um, I love hanging out here. I love this time that's set aside. It, it's relaxing to me, and it's good not only for – Mom and dad's mental health, but it also is good for my mental health because it, it takes me back, right? It takes me back and reminds me of the joy of drawing. You know, being a professional for over 30 years, I kind of you kind of lose sight of that after a while, and everything becomes a project, you know. But the thing that got you into this is the love. So my final word to you guys, to all the young young artists out there, is don't lose the love, right? As long as you love what you do, you will never work a day in your life. Remember that, and you can actually earn a living doing this. And I'm going to show you how in my course. Check you check me out at patreon.com forward slash Kapow School. Sign up, right? I'm going to start filling that space up with a lot of exclusive content that you can't get anywhere here. And when you sign up there, you get access to some things that I'm going to be doing behind closed doors only for those that support and uh, support the mission of Kapow, the Comic Art Academy there. And it's going to be a lot of giveaways, a lot of rewards. Okay. If not, just hang out with me here on you know, on Facebook and on YouTube and 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 wherever else I am. D Live, Twitch, hang out here, right? I'm gonna be streaming here on the regular anyway. I just, you know, you probably I'm just gonna be reserving some things exclusively for my for those that support me um, and allow me to do this full time and earn a living from it. But I'm not gonna cheat you guys from an experience and from and from fun. I want to have fun. And so thank you guys for so much. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. I know here in Chicago, the weather is broken. We're getting some nice weather, and people are getting a little bit reckless because COVID is still going on. Uh, but I understand we've been sheltered in place for over two months. I get it. I get it. But whatever you do, be safe. 
go love on your loved ones. Sit down, draw. I'm going to be doing some more Disney stuff. I will see you next Tuesday here in the Kid Zone from Kapow, the Comic Art Academy. I am D.R. Solo Perry. Thank you so much. I'm out of your lives for the moment. God bless. Kapow.